All right, this is the arc I was waiting for, it looks like. This episode is called Clash. Class A versus Class B. I am super excited. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius, back at it again with My Hero Academia, Season 5, Episode 3. Uh, last episode, we had a whole deal of information when it comes to Hawks and his endeavors into the endeavor, that was no pun intended, with what he's doing in terms of getting information on in the League of Villains. We had NG Todoroki, or Endeavor, about how he's dealing with the whole family situation. Now, about that, a lot of you guys commented last episode uh, that I definitely did miss or didn't bring out to light the whole uh, when Natsu was leaving, he said, I'll never forgive you for what you did to To. I didn't write down the name. I definitely need to go back and write the name down. Um, Toyo, I believe, something along those lines. And me, when I was watching it, not knowing Fuyumi's name, just assumed that that was the sister. But then I got Fuyumi's name a couple of minutes later. So I never like re went back and processed that. I definitely caught it during editing, but wasn't able. we weren't able to like talk about it. So that definitely points towards maybe the Dobby you know theory and who knows maybe it's just another sibling maybe it's another family like i really have no idea but it's just more information more backstory i've been told season five is going to be one super dark and two going to reveal a lot of information i am excited for that hopefully none of my favorite characters get killed this show definitely does kill characters but it, it's it's not super dark so we'll see kind of where that line gets drawn i am super excited to hop into this episode especially with the whole backstory or with the flashback, with the Deku dream, with all for one, one for all, the whole avatar state, realm, separate spirit world. He needs to be strong enough to know more. So excited about that. I say we just jump right on into this episode. Remember, if you guys want full length to this show and early access to all the other shows I'm watching, like Black Clover, Jujutsu Kaisen, Haikyuu, many, many more to come. We are four episodes ahead of those shows on Patreon. That link is always down in the description for you guys. Make sure to check that out. If you guys want to support me, Patreon is not really your thing. If you guys could just leave a like and a nice comment, it really does help me with that YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys currently are not subscribed. Click that bell so you guys always know exactly when I post to the Dapper channel. And then follow me on all my social medias, Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter, at Dapper Darius. Thank you guys so much my hero academia season five episode three cl uh, clash class a versus class b let's do it i genuinely wonder at what at what like at his prime how many quirks did all for one have like was it in the hundreds was it in the tens oh it must have been he must have been so strong so he gave him the quirk to gather power right and but he already had the quirk to pass it on so that's how it kind of unified and became one for all if i remember correctly yep what's the singularity point mean i don't even know so we're gonna leave off exactly after this so we know exactly what's oh, okay or they're gonna play the opening i guess Oh, Yama coming in to check on his next door neighbor. Good friend. <laughs> that whole episode last season where he gave him the cheese trying to cheer him up and stuff. That was a that was a fun time. Look at them. Why do they get more blacked out at the end? I want to know so much. Oh, I can't wait. Can we get like a, an individual episode with each one, their backstory, their power, how amazing they were in a, in a dope ass fight? I would love it. I'd buy the Blu ray. Did All Might go through something similar at all? You'd think he would, Rev, right? Okay. Okay. Nana Shimura of the Shades. Yeah, I want to know about that singularity as well. Yeah, it's so crazy that he talked directly to Deku. That even happened to Nana at all? Okay. A recorded. Really? So it's kind of like a psyche, just built in. Yeah. You, you gather that strength, an impossible dream, it passes on. 
so similar to the Avatar, but I love that. Avatar is one of my favorite shows of all time. I, I absolutely love this. He's so deep in thought. Yeah, I forget his name from... Yep, and then eventually children are just like... I remember they talked about that, yeah, last season. Make, it makes so much sense. Makes so much sense. Yes, yes. I've been asking the same thing. Hmm. Seiji. Seiji was the one at Shiketsu High who was talking about the singularity theory, right? Uh oh, we'll be busy today. We're starting it. Clash, class A versus class B. I love Shinzo personally and his and his little backstory. Field Gamma. This is where Nezu fought Kaminari and Ashido, right? Oh, they're wearing winter versions of their fits. Oh, that is so wavy. Look at Bakugo. He looks dope. Yeah. Cold would be his natural counter. It makes a lot of sense. Heat built. Oh, that's so dope. Oh, is that Monoma? Mono would, Monoma would be the only one who... Who would be the talking trash? He's the trash talker between the two classes. Ooh, look at them. I love all their outfits as well. I would say amazing. I still remember how he protected Momo, season three. Oh, I wish I could write down all their names. Kendo, best girl. Man, I want to write down all his names. Oh my god, Tetsu Tetsu looks amazing. I'm sure we're going to get to be able to get a lot of character development for these guys. Kendo's gonna knock him out with her hands like she always does. Oh, Aizawa this time. Normal course class C, my boy Shinso with the Aizawa like bands as well looks so good. I do thoroughly enjoy his backstory. Everyone thinks that would be a villainous power, but he wants to prove you, you can't you can't help what the heart wants, you know? He's taking this seriously, I like it. True? I respect it. Commendable. My boy. I love that answer. Hey, touche, my man. You got your goals. It's also great seeing Vlad King. I didn't say I didn't say that, but I really do like him as well. Teams of four. Each team will compete one at a time. Okay, this is gonna be dope. I love teamwork, especially impromptu teamwork. Okay, heroes versus villains. Think of the other team as villains. Got it. You win once you capture four people. Okay. Nice and simple. Brings brings me back to season one, especially when Ida had to play that villain, you know? I, I, I get why it's a handicap, but it's great practice for him, so he needs it. Okay, it's not gonna be captains or they choose them. It's gonna be lots. Okay. Okay. I like that team. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, I like that team. I'm, I'm probably gonna like all the teams. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, that's a fun team right there. Uh, of course, he's on Monoma's team. Let's beat the detestable class A together. Oh, I didn't notice that. I see. <laughs> Fanboy hero Deku comes out. Where did you pull that from? That's a great question. Oh, that is a dope looking mask. 
I wonder the reasoning. There has to be a reason behind it, so you can't see him talk, can't see his words. I wonder what it is. Yeah. Eh, if you look at the grades, though. Yeah, touche. Good question. I'm looking forward to it as well. Oh, I love the camouflage from Sue. In terms of immobilizing, Kaminari is definitely the best. Also a valid observation. Sue is just amazing all the time. Oh, Koda with the uh, the recognizance, you know, scouting out. Yuzaki from the left by herself. Oh. She's not a girl right now. She's a villain. Oh, my roaring rage. Holy smokes. Okay. See, I want to get more of their names. I definitely will. Shishida, beast. He turns into a beast, drastically increasing his physique, strength, hearing, smell, and sight. All around a beast. But he goes into a frenzy. Okay. He's the one who can solidify air. Air prison. Oh, he talked. What? How? Persona chords? What does that even mean? Come on, give me some more detail. I swear to God that felt like it was like seven minutes. All right, well, that was a fantastic episode. I have a good amount to talk about. It gave a good amount of information to set up this arc, which is going to be super fun. I'm going to see some amazing teamwork off rip, and I'm going to see some crazy powers. I love seeing quirks, especially used creatively. Like, I think, and I compare this to Avatar a lot in terms of a lot of similarities, because, I mean, uh, I don't know the mangaka of this. If you guys could tell me, I'd really appreciate that. But I know everyone, I swear people have said that the mangaka doesn't take inspiration from Avatar even though it's similar but definitely is a huge fan of star wars obviously you got dagoba beach kamina or kamina ward you know so many star wars references complete i mean even mirio is going to be called the phantom menace but it was like phantom threat something like that just i love those references but it, it, i just i love a lot of those aspects like i love the aspect that you can your psyche or a piece of you your feelings before power isn't like before your power is imbued into this uh quirk it's your feelings first and so a part of you is kind of left behind so you can always not only for motivation inspiration but there is like there is a deeper level to it and even deeper than what toshinori and nana know because from what toshinori knows um deku's the only one who's had this one-on-one -on -one conversation with the first user so that just it gets so crazy and so deep with that and then we still have to question why it popped up the first time during uh, Shinzo's brainwashing. So we have that kind of question and all. It was great to see Nana though, as well, Nana Shimura. Uh, even Deku was wondering why those two users were blacked out in there. Definitely curious about that myself. Uh, I love how it seems like we're going back to our season one roots with this little arc because if we do remember this is a this is supposed to be a it's not it's, not, it's high school right high school teaching us how to be heroes like yes we're getting into the crazy violence crazy dark but we're supposed to be young kids learning how to be heroes even Ida was like oh this is just like season one when i was a villain you know and this is simple you know your heroes think of your opponents as villains their heroes think of your opponents as villains and capture them. You know, you put them in a cute Nezu based prison. Whoever, if you don't do all four of them within the time limit, then uh, whoever has more remaining wins, you know, stuff like that. Whereas Shinso, uh, you'd think would be a bonus being an added, uh, 
additional member on the team is actually a handicap because he's so inexperienced when it comes to fighting. He's had no battle training when it comes to class. He's had no real world experience. The only thing he's done is the sports festival. He did do very well in that, especially all of his uh, general studies friends were all, and even the pro heroes were all proud of him. Even Miss Smile, a lot of I went when I rewatched that, I definitely saw Miss Smile was one of them with her mask that was giving him a, a applause there, which is awesome. But he is definitely a detriment to the team. But he's coming into this with a great attitude saying hey even though this is something where we do have camaraderie between us i'm not going into this with this i'm not going into this with that kind of attitude you guys are definitely obstacles for me to overcome i'm already dozens of steps behind you guys you guys can be friends that's cool i'm coming here to win i'm just letting you guys know thank you for having me very respectable very intimidating i really enjoy i really enjoyed his attitude really like that um, even other people like that attitude, you know, I, Deku's just being a fanboy, wanting to see his quirk in action. So curious about what the mask does. I thought as soon as I knew that was a mask and now he has the uh, the, the bands, they, they have a specific name. I didn't get the name. If you guys could tell me, that would be amazing as well. But the Aizawa bands, he has that mixed with his persona chords. He can use other people's voices as the catalyst for his brainwashing with their friends because it has to do with like directing your speech. Like, okay, I can talk to Kaminari. I can talk to Kira but if i'm not talking to shinso it's okay but i'm talking to my homie behind him but his homie's the you know the radio like it's just like super creative thoroughly enjoying that definitely don't know what's gonna happen with that i also am enjoying their winter versions of their outfits i cannot wait to see all of these fights i won't lie even seeing class b because uh all might was the one who said they've been generally improving you know just consistently because they've been sticking to their studies just work after work after work you know the guy who solidifies air has instead of being like an air shield now he has an air prison like unless you're bakugo with like destructive force what are you gonna do against that and it doesn't even let sound in you know like it's it's just super creative i love the fights i wonder if shishida because he's beast i wonder if he it says he turns into a beast i wonder if he has a human form or if like he's just like beast from uh x-men and just like gets somewhat docile and just turns into like more of an intelligent because it says he goes on a rampage when he goes into like beast mode so i wonder does he have a human form i'm curious to see that as well good seeing monoma as well good seeing a lot of the kendo you know a lot of awase a lot of these classmates i i, I real quick before we end this video we do have a question over here on the discord if you guys don't know we do have a q a section on the discord where if you guys want to ask me anything about any of the shows i'm watching i will try to answer it at the end of the episode this one comes from mr twitchy who is a very known my hero questionnaire asks a lot of my hero questions he asks i i, I assume it was pertaining to the last episode because it has to do with the, the the flashback of one for all and all for one but he asks would you give up your quirk whether for monetary gain or for free if it was a trash quirk or a quirk that hurts you um that's a good question thank you for asking that my answer is yes and i think they gave a really good example in that episode in that flashback i don't necessarily agree with the guy who was quirkless and got jumped so he wanted to quirk to if it was purely to defend yourself understandable but it seemed like he wanted a little vengeance but the example of the guy who had fangs disformed his face and all that and his fangs just wouldn't stop growing his entire goal in life was to just be a normal dude to take care of his parents if if that is his goal and it makes him happy and that happiness is being taken away by something he has no power over and you can there was a power to take that away and if i was in his shoes i'm going to all for one I'm sorry, like that sounds, but like we're living in crazy times. You know, I got to look out. I'm just saying like, I definitely would. It's a great question. It's a little bit of a gray area, especially with that kind of stuff. But I definitely would because I just want, uh, you know, that was a great example. Thank you, Twitchy, for asking. But uh, yeah, check out that Discord, guys. Like I said, super excited about the fights. Super excited about seeing quirks. Super excited about the darkness that will come. I know we're going to get some story. I know it's going to go crazy. We're going to get there. I'm excited. Hopefully you guys are as well. If you are, if you enjoyed this, leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching with me. Have a great day, you guys. Peace out.